Hello planner friends, it's Melanie here with Addicted to Planning. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you are new here, then um, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and uh, you may wanna hit the notification bell since I am incredibly sporadic at posting and apologize for that. Um, my last video was, I think at the end of 2019 and uh, the beginning of 2020 was exceptionally busy and then as you know, March hit and the world stopped. So um, I thought I would come on and share with you where I'm at in my planning. I am still in a Hobonichi Weeks. Um, I am in the same book that I've been in since that last video. I'm going to give you a little walkthrough of it, tell you what's been working, what I've continued for the full year, and also um, to give you a little update on what I'll be doing for next year. So uh, this cover is the um, Vanderspeck Codex in the Janet Leather um, number 111 called Velvet Sand. Um, it did take two months to the day to get to me. I ordered it on um, July 14th and it came on September 14th and which actually ended up being one day shy of nine weeks. And I know that Petra is exceptionally busy um, so that's why I think it took so long. Um, and so while I was waiting, of course, I was on Instagram looking at photos of it and somebody had posted that um, this leather is not for the faint of heart. And I think that is an absolute perfect way to describe it because it shows literally everything. They talked about um, watermarks. So I did, um, as someone had suggested, go and order this. Um, this is a spray to protect it and I gave it two coats. So I think we're good from a watermark perspective on this thing, but it still shows everything else. So if you can see this little mark right here, that happened the first 24 hours that I used it. And then this here essentially is one week's worth of wear and tear on this guy. So I am going to have to embrace the marks and the character that uh, will become this leather but it is absolutely stunning. So I didn't do any customizations on this, so it's everything else is just the standard. So let's get into it. I'm gonna have to sit down because I know this is gonna be long. Okay, so um, inside the front cover, I have, um, these are little things I had made by Gigi Plannery, I think is what she's called, um, or her shop is called. And she's not on Etsy, you just kind of place the order through um, Instagram, just through a direct message. But um, so I had her make these, which, you know, as my um, channel name, I did five hearts because there's my husband and I and the three kids. And then I have a little inbox here where I've just put some um, flags in the event that I have some quick uh, random tasks. These are from, or these two, I think we came in a pack of three, so I have a third one. Um, are from carrots and olives, I think it's, pro it's plural, but so I'll probably put some sort of a routine on these, whether it be, you know, morning routine or weekly routine, haven't decided yet. Um, and then this is also from carrots and olives. So a little priceless card. Um, I have, oh, carrots and olives as well. This was the freebie in my most recent order, which I thought, wow, did she like literally make it for me because that couldn't possibly match my planner better. And then I have the Snow Leopard um, Ollie clip here. Inside, nothing's changed here except I did finally swap out my little um, blotting paper because this one was looking kind of ratty and awful. So I put a new clean, fresh one in there. Um, but as you can see, it's very functional and, and I get a lot of use out of it. Um, this you've seen, this you've seen. Again, assuming you watched one of my older videos or the last video I did. So still have this tip in. I think for 2021, I'm probably going to take these out just because they add so much bulk. Even though it's only um, vellum that's been laminated, it's still adding a lot of thickness to this. Um, so here is my yearly calendar. Um, still functional, still using it, which is great. I was wondering if as I got further over here onto this side, if I would fall off, but nope. And I might've even added some stuff since the last time that uh, I showed you this. So, um, so this has been great and, uh, and I've, I'm, it's very functional and I do plan on continuing that next year. 
as you can see, I started <laughs> washi taping when we were quarantined or when school ended, but I didn't continue that on. So anyway, um, then we'll just quickly go. Oh, so the one thing I did want to share or show you is oh, two things. So the first thing is um, if you've owned a Vanderspeck before, then you might already know this, but the standard size of this does not allow for a clear cover on cover to slide into this. Um, I just remember I got to take some notes at the back. Um, it's too big. So I considered having her make the cover actually a little bit bigger in order to allow for that to slide in, but I think it ended up being like an additional like $40 or something like that. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Why don't I just cut this? I'll just cut it. So I did. I did the cardinal sin and I just cut off the plastic here on the top and the bottom. So it's kind of like just a little foldy flap thing now. But it works, and that was free. So I keep that all the way in there. So um, the yearly calendar, I think I shared with you in my last video, I highlighted the top here for each month, and then I carried that color through to each month. So when I showed you December, you can see that's green, predominantly green, blue, pink, and so on, and I'll give you, I'll continue to flip, but I just wanna show you that. So then I have the blue, I continued on the weekly pages, and I also continued the blue on the daily pages. So that was the green for December, and then there is January, so daily pages. So I carried, carried the color all through, which was great, because whenever I flip through the back here and I look at my daily pages, I have a pretty good idea of what month I am in. I'm hoping I'm still in frame. Okay, so February, March. Um, I was actually in San Diego when the WHO, uh, WHO, declared the global pandemic, which was a little unnerving, um, being so far from home and having <laughs> um, a pandemic be announced. Um, April, May, June, July, August, September, which is the month we're currently in, October, oops, and November, and December. So I've only done a little bit of decorating in the monthly pages upcoming, and then I've got, you know, stuff for next year. So then we get into the, the sorry, the weekly spreads, which these you've probably already seen because I, I think I was midway or almost all the way through December when I posted my last video. So these were all there. Um, January. And I did prior to January 1st try to declare a sticker free um, spreads because I didn't want to bulk it up even before the year started. And so, and I did, I, I was successful. Um, it was just marker, highlighter, pen, stamps. Um, was that it? Watercolor? I don't know. I don't know what else I used, but, um, so January 1, I was able to start using stickers again. So, um, I went a little hog wild on some weeks. I'm sure you will see. I'm hoping there's nothing overly sensitive or, um, yeah, personal on some of these because I didn't do a lot of covering up of these pages. I did in the notes section, which I'll still walk you through. But, so February, March, this was where everything went to the toilet. Um, so I actually didn't even do, if you can see, this little thing here has been consistent right up until next week. I mean, I'm still using it. So steps, weather, and dinners. Um, these were, you know, vitamins and medicine, whatever, uh, check boxes. But then when I traveled, it was a crazy busy week for work and, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't draw it out. And so whatever, I ended up just journaling a little bit on those days. Um, and then this is when quarantine hit and I found some adorable stickers. I you probably already saw them up here and I, they were print at home and I don't have a, a silhouette or a Cricut printer. So, um, I had to use, <laughs> um, scissors. But so they were like quarantine 2020. And then when you get into the weekly pages, I've got like social distancing level is expert, you know, grocery shopping, exercise, virtual happy hour. So fun little stickers there that are more um, geared towards what we're currently going through. So some weeks I was doing habit trackers. I started tracking how many full weeks at home uh, we were. So there was six. 
um, I was trying to include some positive um, stuff to, you know, keep the keep the morale up. Uh, but I did keep using it, which was great. I mean, I was one of the lucky ones that was able to continue working and working from home. So um, I was still busy uh, just at home. So this planner still came in handy. Um, so we're up to 10 weeks at home. 11, 12, 13 weeks. And that was also my middle, um, or my oldest son's birthday. Uh, more habit trackers. Let's see what else we got. Um, and then right around here, we, our office opened back up. I think here, yeah, we called it a soft opening. And then our office was open for business again on um, July 6th. So I've been back to work, but I'm trying to work a couple of days from home still because virtual learning and you know everyone's still in the house but so it's been working okay um i've had that flexibility we did take a little vacation um in the middle or sorry towards the end of july um so you know it we just did an airbnb and avoided everybody um, but it was it was nice to get away so into august my youngest's birthday um, these were some more stickers that were a lot of fun. Washing masks, because that's a thing now. Um, I tried to get out and do some walking. The latest exercise ever. Um, I have uh, put this pen loop on here, and this has actually worked out really well. Um, but I'll take it out for now. But I'll talk about that, about the pen in more in a minute. But some more weeklies. And then this was back to school week. I think this was, was that last week? Maybe last week. Um, as this is this week. And you might remember from my last video, I had the um, Type A for Alexa full page um, tabs. And they're so beautiful. And I love them so much. They're just, this is getting so fat and thick that I had to pull them out. So these are actually from Martha Plans. Um, I ordered them and they were here really quickly. She was uh, really on it and they're beautiful. Um, I do wanna talk a little bit about the bottom tabs. So bottom tabs are my jam. I absolutely, they're my favorite because, can you see this? I think so. I don't think anything else is as fast as just putting my thumb there and flipping open. Like monthly, weekly, daily. Like I love the bottom tabs. So. Those are the three that I have there. Those are obviously the ones I access the most frequently. So I just asked her to make um, them upside down to, to bottom tabs. And then I also did index notes, projects, um, inbox. She gave me a freebie with my name on it, which was super sweet. And then I have one for kids. Um, so those have been working really well, except when they slide off, which is what that little piece of wall sheet tape there is for because I'm going to tape it down whenever it's up. Uh, and it's more just, they stay really well on, but because when I'm writing in this, I find that sometimes my sleeve will pull this off and I don't want to lose it and be like, oh, where did my today tab go? Um, so these are the upcoming weeks and we're almost at the end of the year. I do have my 2021 Hobo and I know that you can start using it. I think it's December 1st. I think this is the first week you can use it. Um, but last year, I vowed I'm going to have all the full year in one book. So I am excited to uh, to carry out this book in its entirety until December 31st. And then I'll start using the new one now. That being said, doesn't mean I'm not going to set it up in advance. That's absolutely going to happen. Um, so we got some sticker kits, which I don't use a lot. I'm sure you saw. It's just three I think or four in there um but I have them and I want to kind of use them up so I'll probably use them more towards the end of this year because next year I'm going to try to go for more minimalist functional muted colors stop looking like someone vomited on my page with stickers um which you know it often does and uh and just have it more um zen like so that it's I don't find it difficult, even though there's a lot going on, that I still get stuff done. Like, I absolutely still get stuff done. Um, last weekend was very lazy. 
Okay, so, so that will take us to the end of the year and then we will get into the notes section. I still have my weekly review on this tip-in, sorry for the glare. Um, another one that will probably go away when um, I set up my 2021. What I will likely do is I did download the um, Peanuts Planner Co. Um, foldable thing that has weekly, monthly, and daily planning. And then on the reverse side, it has um, the week kind of at a glance. Um, I'll show it in my next video when I do the setup of my new um, hobo. But um, so these will go away, but I'll still have that kind of tucked probably in the front cover, which I didn't talk about what's inside those covers. All right, we'll come back to the weekly review. So in this cover, I think I've got a $5 bill. If you guys watched one of my first videos, I think I had a $1 bill. So apparently I've upgraded um, a couple of blank checks, um, a big peacock sticker. It's very pretty. It's just like a freebie and something I got. Um, and then these are the number stickers that I'm using for my daily spreads, which I'll show you in a bit. And then in the second pocket here, I have some more scratch paper and some of these transparent dots, which I'm not sure how to use. <laughs> I don't know what I want to use these for. I did have an idea for the daily pages. I'll keep these up here so I remember to show you that or tell you that. But so that's just in the pockets. So back to the weekly review. So that just stays nice and tucked away. I still have the moon phases, um, the key, which I never need. And then this is my index, which, as you know, um, obviously is a lot fuller since um, my last video. Um, I have waiting for someday, maybe. Then I have notes pages, which I have covered up because of personal stuff. This was my online tracker, which is Kind of scary if I were to like put dollar signs around all of this. How much did that add up to? But anyway, so obviously it went up to September 7th. I'm going to be ordering more stuff between now and the end of the year. So I had to go ahead and set up another one, which is back here. So that, these were notes I took at a seminar, kid stuff, last year's Christmas, stuff for this channel. Um, I think this was the 10 day planner challenge or something like that from Vienna Ortiz talked about that in my last video, random notes, and then we start with some daily pages. So here's that color coding I was talking about. Um, so these are December's, um, and then we get into January. Uh, they're random notes for meetings, and that's what I love about, so this is essentially the bullet journal method that I'm using in this planner, and so because the pages numbers are there, I can index stuff and just stick, you know, random notes and, and meeting you know, whatever, uh, in here and not have to really worry about hoarding pages for, you know, daily spreads or for notes specifically. They just all kind of, you know, fold in here together. So, so these are more daily pages, meeting notes, meeting notes, or I guess not meeting notes, project notes. Um, and then we get into February and I'm sorry if I'm boring you because <laughs> this is a lot. So this is why I'm in a mega. I have so many pages. Uh, we get a March, more March and meeting notes, April. And I think I figured it out. It's roughly eight to 10 pages per month that I use for daily pages. Um, I hope I said that right. Like, like this, I got a whole week on two pages. And again, I don't know how many, like sometimes it's huge. Uh, I got a whole week on this one as well. So I, count, I counted and then I averaged it out. And yeah, it's about eight to 10 pages um, per month for my dailies. And so I've counted out how many pages I've got left because I'm all the way back here on page 150. Um, and there's additional notes shoved in there, I'll show you. But um, so I think I've got plenty of pages to get me through the end of the year. And I'll still have, I don't know, a dozen or more I think pages that are blank that I can continue to use for notes or random collections or spreads. So I did try this. I made like a little tracker for May, um, which is <laughs> sad face because I suck. So look at that, mm, fell off. And it's not because I wasn't checking it. It's because I wasn't doing it. So what you gonna do? So I didn't do it again, but so then we're into May, daily pages, more meeting notes or more project notes, and then daily, daily, daily. I did early on jump to page, I think a hundred and just do like a inbox. And so I had this tabbed 
um, as an inbox and I had some extra post-its on these two pages. Um, but as the page got filled up, I've now moved it to the back here. And I actually didn't try to, I don't know, that many pages left. So it's just shoved kind of like at the next page. But so, um, yep, dailies, master tasks. And then I, so I made it to that page come June. Um, dailies, projects, dailies. And then in July, I started using these numbered stickers from um, Happy Planner, I guess it is, uh, those sticker books. Um, so that's what this is. I just keep this at the front because it's what I've been using for my numbers. This was done with a stencil, the Hobonichi stencil. Uh, so the packing list for the trip that we went on. So, and I really liked how these, or I do like how these daily um, pages look with this number there. So I continued that for July, August, and September. More spreads, some pictures from that trip that we took. Um, more dailies. This now we're in August. Oh, so I want to talk a little bit about the pen. So I think I've always told you guys that I love the Pilot Juice 0.38. I love that it's retractable. I love how it writes. It's, you know, the ink is really bold, crisp, dries quick, doesn't smear. It's fantastic. And I don't know why I always try to go find a new pen. So I did order the Pen Gems. The, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with them. Um, so I'm not a ballpoint fan. So I did order a bunch of refills. Um, so I have, I think this one, this is the one it came with. And then I ordered the um, Uniball Jetstream 0.7, which was extremely juicy and way too, um, yeah, gooey on the page. So I didn't like that. I didn't like the ballpoint. And then I also ordered these, um, Monte Verde. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but they're essentially, I think they're a hybrid as well or a ballpoint. Didn't like those either. So the, the ink that I'm using in this pen currently is a pilot, um, gel ink. I think it's a 0.4. Um, I blew through the first, uh, insert or what do you want to call it? Refill. <laughs> I, in like three and a half weeks, I needed to replace it. And um, I was like, wow, that, because they're tiny. I think they're only like, you know, this big. So um, I've decided now I just keep, and because this bugs me, because I'm exceptionally lazy and, you know, doing this every time I want to write is too much. Like <laughs> this is just, come on, it's so much easier. So this just hangs out here and it's perfect. It just sits there. And if this way, if I run to a meeting, I just grab my planner and go, I know my pen is in the book. But I have these everywhere. I have one at my desk at home. I have one at my desk at work. I think I've got one in my purse. I could just keep them everywhere now. So this is actually the pen that I use in this planner. The other thing I didn't like about this refill is that if my hands are sweaty at all, um, they, it does smear after the fact. So this, I drew, I wrote this, it dried, life was good. I probably was over here writing and then my hand might've been sweaty and it smeared the ink from like the day before. And that frustrated me a little bit as well. This does not do that. I love this pen. So I love that the clip does that. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's a little bit about the pen. Okay. So I'm going to quickly look at my notes. Did I talk about everything? Make sure that I'm not um, missing anything. I'll come back to that. Okay. So more daily pages because we're still in August. Um, prepping for the boys school into September, my daughter's birthday. September, um, notes from a, I haven't drawn the notes yet, but I dedicated two, two pages to it, but to a seminar I attended, um, more online orders, uh, more daily pages, big sticker sheet from Kawaii, Sweet Kawaii Designs, I think. I did, this is the second time I've bought one of their sub boxes. Um, and this, this one was because it was more muted and more, you know, these softer tones. So um, but I don't, I don't keep them up. It's, it's too much, but it's fun to have a little something. So, and then it brings us up to, I guess, tomorrow. So early on in the year, I jumped ahead again to page like 150 and, um, took notes. We're doing trying keto. So I have notes about, you know, weight and how I was feeling and everything else. So I block those off for, you know, because it's personal, but so 2021 hobo, 
Um, these are the collections that I know I'll be bringing forward into my book next year. Um, so I'm just, it's, right now it's just kind of like a brain dump as I think of things that I definitely want to keep track of in next year's book. I'll just keep it on this page. I've started my Christmas spread for 2020. Um, there's that inbox I talked about. And then I think that's it for the pages. So where are we at? Like 167. So this will likely be October 1st because I'm pretty sure I can finish out September on these two pages. So we'll do October here and that will be 167 to get me through October, November, December. And I think that will be fine. And as we get back further into the book, so these are some Tombow swatches and water, random watercolor and random pen tests. These I should just throw away because I don't even look at them. Um, cute note from my husband. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is the stencil from Beauty by Starlet. Uh, this is the one that I use the most often, so I keep it actually in here. The other two are handy, but not on the book. This is my 100 page, and I know a lot of people were wondering what should they do with this page, and, and I did too. It was blank for, I'd say, most of the year. And then at some point I was like, you know what? <laughs> I think I wanna write down all the words that have become popular this year. Things that, um, things for 2020, essentially. And these very well might be words that were in my vocabulary before, um, but never to the extent that they are now. I mean, I don't think I ever used the word social distance in my previous, you know, in our previous life before COVID. The other things I did in here, um, I wrote down some names of um, some people that we lost. Um, and yeah, so I thought this was a, a great use of this page. I'm up to number 82. So we've got this left for 2020. Let's hope there are no more um, tragedies or um, terrible storms or anything else that um, will fill this. And then I, maybe I could put maybe the last 20 pages, whatever numbers can be happy things. Who knows? Anyway, so that's my 100 page. Um, my kids, uh, school schedules, they're both virtual, but, um, so I just printed them off and, and, uh, taped them in or whatever, permanent adhesive runner. I also cut down a sticker sheet and tipped that in. So I just have some flags back on this page and then some, some of my favorite stickers on this side. Uh, and then these, I think were last year's school schedules for the kids and more random pen tests. This was Brandy Michelle Plan shared this. This is the getting things done. Um, you know, I guess going through this, the steps, the flowchart for uh, handling your inbox. This was a freebie from Cloth and Paper. And then we're back here with my two Hobonichi stencils and my pen. All right, so what else do I want to tell you? So the weekly spreads, um, I started, or I do, I guess I didn't start. I think I did it all year for the most part. Right here on the Monday, I write page and what page number the daily pages are on back here. Um, so, you know, if it started whenever, so this is page 110. So I can come back here to page 110 and I will see the daily pages for that week right there, Monday, July 6th. So that's handy because um, I can't get a lot of detail obviously in this one little box. So if I needed to go reference additional detail to that, it's easy to, to find what page that is. And that's what I was thinking about doing for these. I was considering using the dot, um, that color that corresponds with that month. Um, so this one would be pink. So, you know, on maybe the edge of the page, fold it over so that when the book is closed, you can kind of see, you know, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. And since we're almost through the year, I could easily get through them, but um, so maybe just a little, I haven't decided but that's an idea I had, so we'll see. Uh, let's see. The one thing that is also consistent is my reoccurring tasks. Um, I keep them on these page flags, so when they sit here until that week, then I transfer or I migrate the task itself to the daily page, and then I will move this forward to the next month and put it down so that I don't have to keep rewriting um, those tasks. And that's something I think I've done in every planner I've ever had, so. Um, that's one of my favorite uh, hacks for these little flags. Let's see, what else did I have on here? Um, might be it. I did consider for a hot minute, so as you know, I've, I continue to do this on this side. I started to section off this 
third of the page um, for, and I can't say it's homeschool because that's not what it is. It's, you know, um, whatever virtual school, um, you know, to kind of keep track of what the kids have to do or what assignments they may have. Um, but I don't, I think, how many weeks did I do that? I think just the two. And so some of them I didn't really need and it just seemed like a waste. So I don't know if I'll continue to do that. I, I'll maybe come up with another way to track what the kids got going on in school, but we'll see. Um, that might be it. Um, there was something else that I recently found, which I thought was super cute or super clever. Is I have this notepad. So this is from Levenger. Um, I think it, they call it their junior size, but uh, it's predominantly set up in the, I think it's the Cornell method of note taking with the big margin on this side and pages over here. But anyway, I have one of these on my desk at work and I have one in, on my desk at home. And so what's great about it is if I just need to quickly grab a pen and take notes about something. Like this pen still has a little, they all do. <laughs> they totally do. All right, let me grab the trusty pilot because pen choice does depend on the paper. Um, I love, I hate this pen on this paper, but I love it on this paper. So it's all about the paper. Um, so anyway, so you take a bunch of notes and what I found, which was super awesome, is I just could just rip the note off. And so say this isn't something that I need to archive. I mean, they're just scratch notes for like an upcoming meeting and I'll probably throw it out later. Um, if I fold it basically along that line where that margin is, it slides in the back of my planner. Because I'm videotaping this, it's not gonna go really nicely. But I could just, and this way it doesn't fall out. I don't have the big back pocket. I decided not to get that because I really don't think I'd use it. Um, I had a Julio uh, for a hot minute and um, which I'm probably going to sell, but that had the big back pocket and I never used it. So it just added bulk I found. So I didn't bother getting it here, but sometimes you have this. So I love this little thing. So I've been using this, which has been great. Um, yeah. So this, these are some notes I took of a, um, it was called survive and thrive with online learning. It was something that our County, um, did it was like a webinar and I took a bunch of no notes for that but and I actually might archive this I might pull these notes into here because I have a feeling it's going to be something that you know I'm going to need for a while so but yeah it just slides in the back there I love that and then I've got them handy if or when I want them or I need them and I can throw them out when I don't anymore so I think that's everything I wanted to share with you guys today um prior to getting into this cover I did mm, I almost buffed out. <laughs> uh, I was in a BDS pre-loved Touch Me Pearl, which was like a gray color. I'm probably going to sell that one. Um, but, and then I've got my hobo for next year. I went with the cherry blossom. Um, I wondered if the latte might look good in here. It does not. So I'm probably going to give that to my sister. And um, yeah, that will be what I will have going for next year. But we're going to have to embrace the marks and the character that this is developing and just absolutely love my Hobo Weeks. I love that I'm going to have more than one full year in this one book and I can take the book and archive it and have it forever. Now, this is a really tough year. You're all probably thinking the same thing. So maybe, you know, It'll be something that we give to our grandkids to say, yeah, this was during the pandemic. Um, I am considering making a cover for it to slide inside one of these clear cover on covers when I archive it with, and you've probably seen them too, all the various funny memes from this year. If 2020 were a slide or if 2020 were a drink, um, if 2020 were a scented candle, they're like, they make me laugh and we need that right now. So I might make um, a piece of paper, put all of those on it and then Put it around this book when I go to archive it at the end of the year. So I hope everybody is staying safe um, and doing well and I appreciate you guys watching this video and uh, I hope to get another one up here soon um, and uh, thanks for stopping by. Oh I know what I forgot to tell you. All right so this is where I stuck this <laughs> so it actually says this week so that's a, probably a no-brainer but the little pen thing on the back keeps the highlighter that I'm currently using, the color that I'm currently using for the month um, handy. And I just stick it in the week section. And then when I close it, it keeps it nice and 
handy. It's not crushing my tabs. It's not in the way. Um, it doesn't fall out. Like, it's perfect. So I almost let that slip. Sorry, guys. That was what I was going to share with you about that silly little thing. So, but when I open it up, it's easy just to take it out. And obviously, I don't need the highlighter every time I'm using this. So mostly the pilot. So now I will say um, adios and uh, hope to see you all really soon. <laughs> Bye.